Welcome to another broadcast of the Deborah Ruffini Show on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are podcasts. Find them at artistfirst.com. And now, your host, live from England, here she is. It's Deborah Ruffini. Greetings from England. This is Deborah Ruffini with another broadcast of the Deborah Ruffini Show. Um, I quite often start the show by saying it gives me great pleasure. But on this occasion, I'm afraid I'm unable to say that. Um, we could say it gives me, and hopefully yourselves, a great giggle. Um... As you know by previous broadcasts, um, I've had a, a bit of a run-in with the police at the hands of a, a controlling ex-partner who thought she could just phone the police, tell them a bunch of lies, and uh, you know we wouldn't normally expect the police to just phone the person who they're accusing and batter them without any evidence, but sadly, don't know how the... Uh, uh, the police forces in the US, but certainly over here, it is re- it really is very much Keystone Cops. But yet, this sort of thing can happen, and it's maybe our way of getting through it is to to have a chuckle and and uh, you know focus on the humour. But it's incredibly dangerous, um, uh, as I touched on in in previous broadcasts. But I would like to update you and read you a, 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 a flabbergasting, for want of a better word, report that I've, uh, I had the displeasure of receiving um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, and uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, this should actually, t- so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this report to you and, and break it down where, you know, it's, it's a, a great attempt at gaslighting, it's um, it's a poor attempt at gaslighting. It, it's it's just sheer lunacy to sum it up, pretty much. But basically, it's it's um, uh, so to give you an outline, just in in case you're not familiar with the the situation. Well, well, actually, it'll be um, re- revealed to you in in. Uh, uh, when, as I as I read this, because I'll be covering that this, this report covers what's happened. But um, as some of you may be aware, I I uh, yeah I was I was falsely accused with with no evidence whatsoever, but by by things that just not just no evidence, but things that are just too zany to be true. They they're just things that just couldn't possibly have happened. Um. When I read this, I, I kind of knew, you know, when you get that sixth sense, or maybe it's not a sixth sense, it's maybe it's a mix, well, mixture of that and, you know, realising how they operate generally. But I just knew it wouldn't be a good outcome. I just knew it wouldn't be a good outcome. I think because, the, so this, um, as I've mentioned before, the P, PD, what's it, the PDSI, the prof- Professional standards, PSDI. Sorry, have a little bit of dyslexia, so I'm getting I'm getting my initials round the wrong. The PSDI, the Professional Standards Department Investigator. They kind of police the police, and then um, the IOPC. Thank God for the IOPC, which I was originally quite sceptical about until they, hallelujah, saw sense because they didn't have any bias in. Um, you know, in coming to a, a fair conclusion. Um, but it seems to be that the, the PDS, Professional Standards Department, it seems to be that they act as almost like the prefects to the to, to their colleagues and, you know, irrespective of unfair prefects. Prefects are supposed to look after <laughs> look after the um Everyone in the school, aren't they? But um, it's almost as if the, the prefects are corrupt. But they say, "Oh, don't, don't worry. We'll 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 cover for you. Yeah, you can you can do no wrong. And we'll just we'll twist things. We'll gaslight. We'll we'll make the person, um, the true victim, feel as if they're going gaga. 
But do you know what? It's not happening anymore because I'm getting to... A bit like when you come out of quite often quite some time when you come out of an abusive relationship you then see the degree of manipulation you that you then see you see it for how it really was and you can't be fooled anymore but when you're in when you're in anything like say when people that when they're inside cults you know that's the normality and it's almost like the expectancy so you know, you have a very different perspective on things when when you come outside of a situation. So this is actually r- really laughable, but I kind of feel very sad at the same time because th- the poor um, people that have to <laughs> have to di- that are part of the policing system that are the prefects to the to the corrupt police officers. The, you know what can they do? Because they're probably putting themselves in a the line of danger as well. If the, if they do the right thing, so they're in this situation, providing they're decent people as humans. Um, what are they supposed to do? They can't upset their mates, can they? So they they've got to lie on their behalf, and it just gets messier and messier. It gets bigger and bigger. And I may have mentioned before um, over here. I think. People in the US are, st- are, 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 are familiar with a lot of British humour, but there was back, back in the 1970s a, a series called Faulty Towers, and um, John Cleese was the the, the owner. And, um, and one episode called, and basically um, the character Basil Faulty, he he just ends up in in, in a, a big mess in most of the episodes because he can't be honest about something and it's, it's actually a good quite a good moralistic program because you know the moral of the story is, is if you you tell big porky pie so that's, that's lies is that british slang for lies um it's not going to do you any favors so basically this this episode is either known as the americans or the waldorf salad and it's um an american with, with his wife comes to stay at faulty towers and he wants a waldorf salad and Basil Fawlty doesn't know, he's never heard of a, he's, a, 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 a wool what? He, does, he hasn't heard, he's not familiar with the Waldorf salad. So rather than say, I'm, I'm really sorry, sir, but I, you know, my chef should know. I, I don't know what a Waldorf salad, what, what is it? Can you, can you explain to me what it is? Which I'm sure the American gentleman would have respected far more. No, rather than be honest and be humble, um, Basil Fawlty ends up, uh, making out there's a chef in the kitchen that can that can rustle this Waldorf salad up and uh, he tries to do it basically he tries to do it himself so the the end scene is um, he goes into the kitchen and has this imaginary fight with an invisible chef and the American gent storms out into the kitchen and just stares at him and it's just it's actually quite powerful because you know as a consequence, Basil Fawlty has just looked so, so foolish. And basically, this this report that I'm about to read to you, I'm going to have to take lots of sips of water because it's quite long. Um, it, it, it is the episode of the Waldorf salad or the Americans, whatever it's called. Um, so without filling you in, in, in the, on the original um, situation, because that will be... You know, for those of you that have already heard this, you, you're filled in. I, just, I could just bore you even further. Um, it's evident in, in this. So, uh, so, so anyway. Um, and incidentally, just just to, in case I forget to say, so I've made no notes. I've just, I'm just. Uh, this is me ranting. I'm ranting, and I could. Uh, I'm limited to my 55 minutes, but I could do it for 55 days. But um, I won't put you through that. Uh, but um, it's a joke. The police, and not not all police officers, I'm sure, but certainly the ones who are corrupt, the ones who lie, they're not doing themselves any favours in. They, they can't expect to gain the general public's trust and gain our respect if they're going to tell such stupid lies or just be generally dishonest it's not it, it is making them basil faulty in the waldorf salad it's very sad and 
so yeah, I'm actually quite calm about reading this because it is it's it's just wacky. And uh, anyway, so so we have uh, okay, <clears throat> dear Ms. Ruffini. I refer to your complaint against Ham. Oh, sorry, I almost said the const. I'm, I'm sure I'm allowed to say the constabulary, but you know, don't really. Who knows what they're capable of? So, uh, where I'm from, the constabulary, where I'm from, there you go. That has been given the reference number, blah blah. I have carried out what I consider to be a reasonable and proportionate handling of your complaint and have provided a clear and evidence-based rationale for my findings within this outcome letter. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, but I'm, I'm stopping and making references uh, because otherwise uh, it, uh, it will probably make more sense to, to do it. Through. Yeah, evidence-based rationale for my findings within this outcome letter. Something isn't evidence-based rationale if it's just a matter of covering for your colleagues. It's no good using clever words, using lots of words, if you're just going blah, blah, blah. And basically this report is going blah, blah, blah and blowing me a raspberry at the end of it. So, you know, they've ignored the evidence that, that I've presented them with, things that just <laughs> could not be true. But there again, so they, they just think that I'm going to forget about all that, really. Um, to address this complaint, reference has been made to the constabulary um, record management system, which has an electronic record of the investigation. I have reviewed RMS, I don't know what that is, recordings relating to this matter, recorded under two long numbers, which must be their references. Um, I have also sought the views of the officers involved in the investigation and subject to the complaint. Um, as discussed with you, I have also taken time to fully review the police records, previous complaint documents that were recorded under the complaint reference number, blah, blah, and the IOPC findings and recommendations following their review of this complaint. In handling your complaint, I have considered the principles of reasonable and proportionate handling as detailed in the IOPC statutory guidance document. Um, so they've they've applied the balance of hang on, is that the balance of um, sorry, no, I'm I'm jumping ahead there. I thought I uh, sorry, do excuse me. At the end of my investigation, I'm required to make a recommendation in respect of whether the service provided by the police was acceptable or not, which I would do at the end of this letter. In order to reach findings, it was necessary for me to analyse and evaluate the evidence. Where I have needed to draw conclusions, I have applied, OK, the balance of probabilities, uh, standard of proof, in um, i.e. in deciding whether something is more likely than not to have occurred, I have... I have had regard to all evidence deemed reasonable and proportionate and the weight to be attached to it. Right. So they've applied the balance of probabilities in deciding whether something is more likely than not to have occurred. But irrespective of personal opinions, that the facts are being ignored. You can't say you're applying the balance of probabilities in deciding whether something's more likely not to have occurred. If it's just your opinion, you, you need to look at evidence. That evidence is so important. As I said in a previous um, uh, broadcast, you, you can't have someone just phone the police saying that I've, I think I've said before, grabbed all the swans from my local pond and I'm guilty because an abusive ex-partner has just said so. Well, what happens if they can't find any feathers? where I live. What what happens then? Am I still guilty? You've got to have evidence. You can't just, you've got to have fact. So balance of probabilities. Oh my word. Um, evidence. We've got all the evidence deemed reasonable and proportionate. Okay. I have explored your perspective. No, you haven't. Um, and confirmed the specifics of your complaint. No, you haven't. <laughs> With you via phone call and email. 
to ensure that I have not missed anything or misunderstood your complaint. He hasn't explored my perspective at all, um, not in the slightest. It's, it's just, this is a silly attempt at gaslighting. It's a silly attempt at gaslighting. An assessment was made about the matter and it was deemed by a dedicated decision maker within the professional standards department that the matter does not meet the threshold for disciplinary proceedings. This is in accordance with the Police Complaints and Misconduct Regulations 2020. Um, it is important that all complaints should be handled in a way that takes account of the seriousness of the allegation, any actual or potential impact or harm caused, and the potential for learning and improvement. The more serious a complaint, sorry, the more serious a complaint, the greater the need for accountability and scrutiny. The matters you have raised in your complaint are not of a serious nature in terms of police misconduct, and therefore I have ta tailored my complaint handling to be proportionate to the matters you have complained about. Right, I need to stop this here. The matters you have raised in your complaint are not of a serious nature in terms of police misconduct. Right, so by the police, what, that, what they're saying is by the police, it, it, regarding this scenario, domestic abuse, this is what it's all about, domestic abuse, false accusation, this is what it's all about, lack of evidence, what it's all about, and dishonesty is, is nothing of a serious nature. It doesn't qualify as police misconduct. Are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. This is not in any way belittling what you have reported. <laughs> Am I actually seeing this? It is simply being objective about the content of your complaint. I was mindful that you had previously made a, a, a complaint regarding these allegations that was handled by PSDI um, blah blah. Obviously, I can't name any names. Um, <clears throat> whilst this complaint is still connected to the same incident, it is important to note that this is more around the content and comments made within the previous explanation, which both you and the IOPC took issue with. Therefore, this complaint review will not aim to repeat or restate what was um, previously provided, but will focus on the two main allegations regarding the language and comments used when referring to you in the previous outcome letter. For clarity, I am a member of the professional standards department, <laughs> another one who's not going to look at things properly. Sorry, that's me saying that, that's not him. Um, whose aim is to uphold standards, yeah, right, in accordance with the standards of professional behaviour as detailed within the Police Code of Ethics, Code of Ethics College of Policing. I am independent of any other department within the constabulary. I must be careful to not say the name, although I'm sure it is okay to do that. I consider that I have been fair, <laughs> really, I consider that I have been fair and equal in treatment of all parties involved in the complaint. Well, keep fooling yourself, mister. I have provided the staff members concerned the opportunity to respond to your complaint allegation and I have made a balanced decision. No, you haven't. You've made a biased decision based on the information and evidence available to me. I fully appreciate that domestic incidents will always have two sides. Actually, quite often they do, but sometimes they don't. Uh, has it got two sides if... Someone just whacks someone for no apparent reason. Is it still two sides if the other side says, uh, because I felt like it? Actually, maybe things do always have two sides then, if you're going to look at it like that. But you've got to be careful with wording. No, maybe often or sometimes have two sides. They don't always. In addition, there is often little in the way of evidence. And in a lot of cases, it boils down to one word against another. That's true. That's why evidence is so important, because anyone could phone saying anything. This is the whole point. <laughs> you, know, you can't just phone saying anything. Um, the police you can't phone the police saying anything. Um, this means that any police interaction or attempted resolution is likely to satisfy the needs of one party whilst causing upset to another. Um, the constabulary involved... 
their default position is that a victim will be, leave, will be believed a victim unless there is evidence to disprove the allegations. Inherently, this is a complex area of policing and police need to, t- to strike a balance taking into consider- oh, sorry, consideration the victim's needs along with the offender. Brilliant. So I'm, that really hurts, incidentally, that I'm targeted as, as the offender, but the perpetrator of the abuse is the victim. What a world we live in. Huh? I mean, anyway, taking into consideration the victim's needs along with the offender or suspect's needs and rights. This is naturally very challenging in cases where there are counter allegations. I actually see their point of view because, if you, again, this is why evidence is so crucial. You must have evidence. You can't just say, oh, I, I believe them because, I don't know, they speak nicely. They look nice. Um, they're, they're, you know, they've got a particular job. They've got this. They've got that. They're a respected um, pillar of the community. You, you can't use bias. You, you've got to have evidence. Um, for the purposes of this crime report, you... You were named as the suspect. That's actually quite painful to read. You were na- sorry. You were named as a suspect, and your ex-partner was recorded as the person reporting, as well as the aggrieved. Oh, bless her! She's the aggrieved party victim in brackets. The original outcome looked at the police response to the report that was made against you, and the police response in dealing with you <clears throat> in regards to this report. Your dissatisfaction to write into the handling of these allegations and contact from the police were recorded and answered under the complaint reference number, blah, blah, blah. On receipt of the final outcome letter from the PSDI uh, named, you referred your concerns under your right of appeal to the IOPC, who in their response to you confirmed their agreement in a number of points you made. Thank God for the IOPC, who actually... Look at things fairly because they're independent and we need unbiased, um, an an unbiased organisation to police the police. It's no good if it's just carried out by everyone in the same gang. It doesn't work. Um, So where am I? Uh... In addition, as you also raised additional concerns around the actions and comments of police sergeant, who I can't name, and police staff, another person I can't name, which I'd love to, I'd love to name and shame them. I'll seek legal advice on that. And if I can, I blim and will. Um, which were recorded within the outcome letter that was issued to you. The IOPC case handler, thank God for her. That's me saying that. She was amazing advised you that as these were not part of the original complaint, they were unable to address them in that review. And as such, you were advised that if you wish these to be reviewed, then you should request that they are recorded as new complaints. That's fair enough, because otherwise it does get sort of big and messy and and it it gets complicated for the complainant myself, as, um, yeah, as I've uh, felt. (laughs) Uh, You requested this and these new complaint allegations were allocated to me as the complaint handler. As part of my complaint handling, I spoke to you on the 25th of May to ensure that I fully understood your complaints. Actually, this guy did do a better job of understanding. Okay, his his covering is still just as devious as the first one, but at least he got it right. The other one deliberately, oh, sorry, have I misunderstood you there, but I'm going to write it down anyway. You know, but this guy has actually got it right, but he's just going to be crap about dealing with it. Um, so as part of my complaint handling, I spoke to you on the 25th of May to ensure <clears throat> that I fully understood your complaint. In our call, we discussed the difference between a dissatisfaction complaint and a complaint recorded under Section 3, and we agreed to raise this complaint to Section 3. This approach would provide you with your right to an independent review of my complaint handling should you remain unhappy with my findings. Yep, (laughs) and I was certainly going to. Um, You advised and we discussed that whilst you acknowledged that you 
did do the things that were raised and admitted this to the investigating officer. This is me. Um, so I'm going to lose my place in, in the report where I'm reading. Um, I, as we'll get on to later, I reported the case of child abuse because every adult should really. If you witness something that shouldn't be happening to a child, you should take it to child protection services. And that should be the, the duty of every adult. So that's well, that's what I'm guilty of, basically. Um, uh, da, 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 da. This approach, where are we? You advised and we discussed that whilst you acknowledged that you did do the things that were raised and admitted this to the investigating officer, this was done in your view for the right reasons, focusing around a genuine concern for the welfare of a child. You also highlighted that you were a victim of domestic abuse, but felt that this was not taken into account by the officers and their dealings with you. You did not feel that either of the named officers had any awareness or consideration for the, for the domestic abuse you suffered and said a number of things and said a number of things to you that were not appropriate, such as the length of time you were in the relationship. That is disgusting, incidentally. We'll, we'll go into that in a minute. Um, you stated that by making this complaint, you hoped for an apology. <laughs> yeah, pigs will fly. But appreciated that this was unlikely. However, you wanted to feel that there was some learning taken from your experience and to raise awareness. As part of the complaint process, I confirmed that I would have the complaint recorded as a Schedule 3 complaint and would look to review the police records, the IOPC, the IOPC documents, and also seek accounts of the officers subject to the complaint. The below allegations are as a result of our email correspondence specifically centred around your dis dissatisfaction with the original review and the, doc and the comments made by the two officers named in your outcome letter. Right, now here's when it, where it gets really interesting. I need to take a sip of water because mouth, I've got a tongue like a cactus at this point. Hang on. Okay, so allegation one, the complainant, myself, states that police sergeant, uh, whatever his name is, uh, can't name, covered for police staff, can't name, and had been dishonest on a report. The complainant feels that PS, can't name, um, was dismissive about her awareness of abuse, of abuse raising website, describing it as a result of her fixated behaviour. She states that organisations, that this is me, she states that organisations of this nature offering support are often founded by those who have been victims themselves. They are not fixated people. To claim this is both rude and overlooking the seriousness of domestic abuse. Um, so this, this is what I put to um, to, the, to, to raise this complaint, saying you, you can't <laughs> you, know, you can't be saying um, that this is just someone who just wants to be mean about ex-partners. The complainant states that um, PS can't name had commented that she had only given limited examples of abuse. She feels that that comment made her feel he was qualifying abuse by quantity rather than quality, which he was. Um, in, your out, in your online complaint submissions, you asked that in addition to the above allegation, you, sorry, in your online complaint submissions, you asked that in addition to the above allegation, you requested that comment is made to elaborating on the dishonesty placed on the report. You state that PS, ah, I was about to name him, person stated that you were clever in speaking about the person in question without actually mentioning her name in your radio broadcasts, a conversation that never took place between you and police staff person I can't name. Um, you also state that you remain flabbergasted how a police so sergeant can refer to severe domestic abuse as limited examples, refer to a website run in order to help fellow survivors um, as the product of a fixated mind and be dishonest concerning a non-existent conversation evidenced by the recording of the phone call in question falsely accusing you of something which you do not believe could possibly be true now is that wording's interesting um, falsely accusing you of something which you do not believe could possibly be true no um, 
it's accusing me of something that couldn't possibly be true not not could not believe it's again it's very poor gaslighting as if i'm going to read it and think oh maybe they've got a point there by adding the word possibly it ain't going to work with me it's not going to work with me um you raised your concerns that it's hard to believe how two members of police staff can behave so dangerously over something as serious as domestic abuse adding that you do not want for these two officers to do this to anyone weaker than you than you are or who are not prepared to take a stand you highlighted your view that domestic abuse survivors have been through enough already the last thing they need is the police serving and protecting the perpetrator and condoning their behavior um as the previous outcome letter detailed the background and information recorded on the systems i will not repeat that information here but rather focus on the specific allegation regarding the comments made by the officers in the outcome letter i have however however sorry i have however reviewed the related crime record number long number and i am satisfied that the relevant matters are all recorded and that appropriate risk assessments were considered and completed all decisions made had appropriate supervisory oversight and authorization i am i am therefore confident that the correct policies and procedures were followed um okay it is not uncommon and in fact is encouraged and is good practice to obtain a supervisor a supervisory review where the actions of a staff member come into question therefore i feel that it was right for ps police sergeant can't name to review the work undertaken by a member of his team and uh, and have input to the complaint allegations made against his staff absolutely true yeah do do um by all means uh investigate the actions of your staff but do it fairly don't just do it and say don't worry love i'll cover for you because at the end of the day we're going to go to the pub and have a good old laugh and all those people that we've managed to arrest and um lie about lie to that they're clearly all in on it they're clearly all in on it because anyone and these are the police by the way any just any human being with with one iota of conscience or decency would recognize that these things are wrong domestic abuse domestic violence is wrong lying's wrong um gaslighting's wrong the things that that they've said in the name of um covering for the perpetrator is wrong etc um whilst i can see that this could be seen as covering up in inverted commas especially where the supervisor of supervisory officer agrees with the actions of his staff member and takes comment which is not well received by the complainant i do not believe that this was the case in this instance now but this um this um police sergeant did cover for the member of police staff he did cover for his colleague if he could see nothing wrong with all that she'd said so this woman just just as a reminder um she had said that uh she told me off for reporting child abuse um when she asked for my side of things sorry i realize i'm going to repeat myself because it is, <laughs> this is this report is long but the things that i'm going to mention here and i've mentioned before the dreadful things that she'd said um to a, a domestic abuse survivor things that you just wouldn't say things that only an abuse i am going to say it only an abuser themselves would say I do have my personal opinions on wouldn't like to be her wife. Let's let's put it that way. I wouldn't like to be her wife. I bet she's the one that wears the trousers and I bet her partner if she's got one um doesn't have an easy time with her. You just know by the things she said during that phone call about domestic violence, domestic abuse, you know that she's the abuser she's the manipulator 
I'm being very careful. I'm giving my, there again, I have no evidence. But I, I would strongly imagine this. Um, okay. I am, however, sorry for any upset caused by the direct nature of the comments made about you in the outcome letter. As stated above, the police do have a difficult balance to strike in, in dealing with and communicating with suspects and victims of crime. I, I actually agree with that, but it must be because they're not in on it. You know, they've again, this is why evidence is essential. They're not in on it. Um, if they could be a fly on the wall, but then again, would they actually... <laughs> Would they be any different, given that I think most of them are of narcissistic nature themselves? So, you know, even if they were in on it, would it make that much difference? I have requested input from police sergeant Unnameable, whose view of the complaint and his actions have remained unchanged. In his response, he has stated, now here's where it makes my blood boil, even though I'm trying to find the humour in it. Um... OK. OK. Um, so this is this is the <laughs> this is the police sergeant who's covering for the, the member of police staff who phoned me. Now, listen to this. Do you know they're just not very bright? That they're just not very bright. And that's an understatement. So. um I would just like, so this is him speaking. I would just like to say that my response to the complainant is unchanged from my previous response. The complainant was and has has been recorded as the suspect in a case of domestic abuse harassment. So my my harassment, incidentally, was as just as a reminder, is reporting to child protection services what I witnessed being inflicted on this little girl. The little girl that actually said to the most um, non-maternal person you can ever get, myself, that she wanted me as her mum because of all that she was going through by her real mum. That says an awful lot for a kid to say to, to me that she'd like to have me as their mum, trust me, because I'm really not good with kids. Okay. OK, the complainant was and has been recorded as a suspect in a case of domestic abuse, harassment in brackets, for which there is supporting evidence. Of course, there's evidence because I was the one that phoned child protection services to which I admitted to. Of course, I'm going to admit to. I'm not going to be like the police and lie. If I've got something to say, I'm going to I'm going to admit to myself being behind the words. Um, and of course, even if I said oh, I want even if I'd phoned child protection services and said, oh, I want to remain anonymous. um. By what I had told them, they would have known it was me anyway, because the things that I, because it was me that witnessed the things that had happened. So, but I had nothing to hide. I, you know, I, of course I'm going to take it to, to um, social services because these things should not have happened to a five-year-old kid. Anyway, <clears throat> um, the complainant was and has been recorded as a suspect in a case of domestic abuse harassment brackets for which there is supporting evidence and was dealt with as such. Throughout the complaint, right, throughout the complainant has claimed that she too was a victim and did make a report to police of this sometime after the initial allegation was made against her. That's true. On the day that she was spoken with by police staff, can't name, regarding the allegations made against her. <laughs> Sorry, that was treated seriously. No, it wasn't. That was treated seriously and investigated. No, it wasn't. As a separate matter. How was it investigated? I, I'm the mean one. I'm I'm the um perpetrator here. It wasn't investigated. Um as a separate matter. It was determined to be a non-crime domestic report with no evidence to support a, a complaint of controlling and coercive behaviour or any other criminal offences. The complainants claim that I, stroke we, have overlooked the seriousness of domestic abuse is unfounded and in fact countered by the fact that her behaviour against her ex-partner was treated as domestic abuse, was taken seriously and addressed as such with the complainant. Right, okay. The complainants claim 
that I, stroke we, have overlooked the seriousness of domestic abuse is unfounded and in fact countered by the fact that her behaviour against her ex-partner um, was treated as domestic abuse, was taken seriously and addressed as such with the complainant. This police sergeant really isn't very bright, is he? Because this is the guy who then goes on to say that my website, and this, this was in the original report covering for the member of police staff who made that phone call to me, he then goes to say, and this is in report, this isn't my work, this is in the report, so they can't run away. Right, so he's really hopping mad about domestic abuse because after all, you know, I, I, I looked after Rufini's abuser, so I must, be, I must be, you know, passionate against domestic abuse. This is the guy that says that my website, Raising Awareness of Domestic Abuse, um, which incidentally speaks of um, my personal experience of psychological abuse, a non-consensual sex act, um, not, not by this particular person, but just, just the, the website in general, okay, um, coercive control, manipulation, etc. It was just me being mean and being nasty about any former partners. He then insists um, that I've been speaking on that website about someone I hadn't even met at the time the website was made. Now, this guy is, I, I just, I mean, it's just completely loony. So I'm quite touched the fact that he thinks I've got psychic ability. How can I be, so the person who raised this complaint, because naturally she wasn't happy, in a nutshell, she wasn't happy that I went to social services about the things she was doing to her child. Of course she's unhappy. An abuser needs to abuse. It's their job to abuse. They stamp their feet and they throw a tantrum if they can't abuse. So the reason she's not happy is because I did the right thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to phone the police and I'm going to tell them about you. And I'm going to tell them that you've said things on your website about me. So he's, oh, oh okay, 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 I, I, need, I need to um, stand by you on this one then. So I get it in the neck that because she's run to them saying that I've mentioned her on the site, which it would just be a complete impossibility. I haven't got a crystal ball. If I did have a crystal ball, I certainly wouldn't have gone ahead and met the, the, the monstrosity of a woman back then um so not only does this member of uh, this um this um police sergeant not recognize that the unquestionable abuse that was mentioned on my website he doesn't not only does he not um recognize it as abuse but it's just someone being nasty about some people who did these horrible things this man saying himself that I'm hopping mad about domestic domestic violence, domestic abuse. But he's, he's saying that all these things that the website consists of, ah, pff, it's just someone being horrible, isn't it? And again, the, you know, and where's the evidence? Again, where's the evidence? Um, it's just... And another thing that's, it's, that, do you know what? It's almost... I can understand how the police get you in knots because even even speaking here, it, I'm kind of getting kind of confused with the amount of there was so much in that phone call, then so much on the report, so much the amount of lies, and you can understand someone breaking down under it all, getting very confused, having no energy, and feeling they're going nuts, feeling you know not thinking straight. Um, feeling tired i can understand it i'm feeling stronger about it now but even in doing this i'm starting to feel confused and it makes you it makes you wonder how many people are actually have been arrested been in prison that, that have been brainwashed into doing something that they they really haven't done so um but yeah apart from all that i've just mentioned so the, the, this <laughs> the absurdity gets bigger because um, 
if I let's say I I had spoken on my website of this this particular person's behaviour, um, and he said that I'm being clever in that was his term being clever in not mentioning her by name. Right? How would this person possibly be recognising herself by by the means of any detailed mentioned behaviour? Do you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't make any sense. So. It's it's just how thick must he be? One to say that I've got psychic abilities, but two, if, if I had mentioned her, which I couldn't have possibly have done, but oh, we're not going to look at the evidence regarding that. Well, she would have only recognised herself by the, <laughs> by the things that she'd done. If I'm being clever in his words, to not mention her by name. What is wrong with them? Seriously, what is wrong with them? They, they must have a brain the size of a peanut. So, um, anyway, uh, to continue, I made little comment that I recall on the complaint complainant's website. Have I just read this bit? Sorry, complainant's website, which she claims to be about raising awareness of domestic abuse. What I recall... Of what I read, it seemed more of a platform. <laughs> oh my goodness, it seemed more of a platform for the complainant to publicly post details about her relationships, including the vi- <laughs> here we go, including the victim in this case. Details that were disputed by the victim, or the publication, or the publication of which was cited as being part of the campaign of harassment. Although it should be noted that the complainant did not specifically name the victim that was advised. While we had, um, sorry, that was advised that while we had received a complaint about the content of the website, we were happy that as it stood, she was not committing any offences in what she had written. What's wrong with them? Seriously, what is wrong with them? I mean, it's it's just even if I were to ask them. To, to, to shed logic on it, are, are they going to actually understand what I'm saying? Are they going to understand any of this? So, so basically, the points that I'd raised, it's like trying to speak to Rain Man. So the um, police sergeant hasn't actually answered any of it. That, re- that requires a, a, an answer, doesn't it? Well, how could, how could Ms. Ruffini have been mentioning someone um, that she hadn't met yet? And how is this person identifiable, even if she was mentioned on this website, if she's innocent from any behaviour that, that would have been mentioned? I mean... The fact that he hasn't, this is interesting, he hasn't answered those things because he would then have to say, oops, I'm really sorry, I've got it wrong. Just like Basil Fawlty should have said in the beginning, I'm sorry, I don't know how to make a Waldorf salad. But no, he's just going to just gonna make himself look utterly ridiculous. So this would have been so much easier. If he had just said, my mistake, got it wrong. And we'd have so much, the general public would have so much more respect for you if you just said, I've got this wrong. I've made a big bodge up, haven't I? But no, we can't do that. We've got to say silly things to cover ourselves and to cover our colleagues. Anyway, allegation number two, another swig of water. Hang on, allegation number two. So... The complainant states that police staff um, can't name Um, her account on the final working sheet, which was documented in the outcome letter, has not been addressed as part of the original complaint resolution. The complainant states that the IOPC agreed that um, this um, member of police staff should not have reacted the way she did to write concerning domestic abuse by her other worrying comments but to be more mindful of her tone, as stated in the report. Um, 
in your outline in your online complaint submissions you state that it is your belief that police staff can't name claimed that you had made defamatory statements concerning your former partner. By this, you state that she is claiming that the severe abuse which she, which she had read, sorry, the severe abuse which she had read never took place. You also state that police staff can't name had also stated in the report that you had made malicious communications again reporting child abuse malicious no that's not that's not malicious communications reporting child abuse to child protection services is not malicious communications it's called the right thing to do by every adult um, and yet you state that your motive for communication um was to safeguard the child uh where are we Okay, you summarise that your main concern over these members of police staff is in is in them have sorry is having them working with cases of domestic abuse, highlighting that in your own experience being told by both of them to not speak up about what happened to you, you state that you would very much hope for an outcome where they were held accountable or sent on some form of domestic abuse awareness training, of course, which um, which it appears they have not done. Sorry, they have not so far done or put into practice. Um, I am sorry if you felt you were not listened to and that the officer did not give you the comfort. or I didn't want comfort. I just, I just wanted fairness, a balanced perspective, um, comfort or confidence that you were being treated fairly. Uh, I almost named them the, the constabulary uh, in question. Take take reports of harassment and or malicious communications very seriously as a police service we must show impart <laughs> okay this is interesting we must show impartiality throughout our dealings with members of the public this is achieved by being unprejudiced fair and objective the police do consider different sides of a situation and try to ensure that each side is given equal consideration whilst remaining vi whilst remaining victim focused the police assess each situation based on its own merits and ensure they are fair and consistent in their actions, objectively reviewing the facts and evidence available. This is really interesting. Right. As a police service, we must show impartiality. What? Yeah, like they've really done that here with me. But they haven't, have they? Um, they're automatically believing the abuser by her phone call of lies where um, the, the members of police staff involved have ignored my evidence as to how such things just couldn't possibly be true. Um, nor have they, they given um, equal consideration to each side. Objectively reviewing the facts and evidence available. Um, so my abuser my former partner presents them with with <laughs> with no evidence um yet yet the evidence i've presented them with they they just don't want to look at they've just completely ignored i mean it is just it is just worryingly dangerous um the member of police staff who um, phoned me collected no evidence. Um, she, again, she just accepted the lies of my abusive former partner and verbally battered me. Uh, OK, the, the, to continue with reading, the RMS report uh, documents that police staff can't mention her was tasked with collecting evidence and, and speaking to both parties involved in the report the document records that the victim i.e the person reporting was initially spoken to information was obtained and evidence was collected and a review of the case was undertaken by a detective sergeant the review concluded that the offense of harassment without violence was made was made out but the majority of the the case was outside of the time limits i don't understand that the majority of the case was outside of the time limits that this particular offence carries. Due to this fact, the decision was made for, for police staff... Oh, 
nearly mentioned her name. <laughs> I really wish I could. Um, blah, blah. can think of other words. To speak with you and finalise the case by providing words of advice. Okay. Provide. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, I was. Yes. Providing words of advice. Words of advice. Don't you dare go to child protection services in the future. Okay, then. I won't. And we'll just read the news in 20 years time of a suicide. Fine by me. Actually, it's not fine by me, but anyway, the RMS report documents that the that the officer in the case spoke to you on 20th of 5th, 2022 and concluded the report by recording um, record, recording that that words of advice, words of advice to not directly or indirectly contact any organization were provi- hang on, provided by provided by to you. Brilliant. So I I can't go anywhere with anything then. Child protection services, social services, anywhere. Can't speak with anyone about what had happened. Um, it's naughty. The abuse is fine. Don't mention it. Don't mention it anywhere or to anyone. Um, sorry, you're going to have to, excuse me, I do have a little bit of, you've probably gathered by now, I do have a little bit of dyslexia, so sometimes I'm reading things and it may, <laughs> um, maybe I haven't sort of read it as if the punctuation's in the right place, so do bear with me, okay. Um, a police sergeant review was, a police sergeant review was undertaken which concluded that all possible lines of inquiry had been followed and that the case was to be submitted for filing, Okay. Um, police staff can't name her has been invited okay this is interesting has been invited to respond to your complaint allegation and states like this is her words i stand by my original responses to the initial complaint that i carried out um right that i carried out Sorry, excuse me. I stand by my original responses to the initial complaint that I carried out a thorough and professional <laughs> professional police investigation using the evidence provided to reach a... Ev- no, again, there was no evidence um, to reach a suitable outcome. Ms. Ruffini's allegations were unfounded. I was professional throughout the entire conversation with her and would remind all concerned that she was the suspect in this investigation of malicious communications malicious communications again contacting child protection services malicious communications slap me on the hand her allegations of domestic abuse by Ms. Howes had never been reported or only reported after my telephone conversation with her what does it matter there may be all sorts of reasons why someone doesn't report it at the time maybe they're scared well that's not the case with me the reason I reported it straight after is because I wasn't having it if I'm going to have things made up about me they're going to hear the truth what is the big mystery in that what is the big mystery in that why should it be suspicious um oh my goodness I actually I actually saw red when I um, oh sorry can I just can I just interrupt that um I was professional throughout the entire conversation with her okay professional so she was professional in telling me not to report um child abuse to child protection services she was professional in um upon asking for my side of things why why do i feel the need to talk about anything that's professional is it uh, professional in falsely accusing me of things which would have been impossible professional in um brushing domestic abuse off with uh, uh you weren't together very long though, were you this is professional this is professional police conduct is it that is scary that is really scary um and then she has the audacity to refer to herself as a domestic abuse champion you heard that right so she continues to say as a current domestic abuse sorry my um laptop's gone a bit crazy as a current domestic abuse champion i would never minimize minimize 
any account of domestic abuse. I stand by my previous accounts and do not intend to apologise for something I have not done. So she said all that about domestic abuse and then she says, um, I would never minimise any accounts of domestic abuse. But she said all that to me. They are thick. They are thick. They are evil. They need to stop. I stand by my previous accounts and do not intend to apologise for something I have not done. I do not intend to change the tone. You really should, madam. In which I address members of the public, which is always professional, clear and with empathy for, for victims and suspects alike. And empathy? Seriously? As mentioned above, the police, sorry, so this is the continuation of the report. She's had her two pennies worth. As mentioned above, the police will be vict victim focused and to ensure clarity and to avoid confusion, the police will deal with the victim and suspect as appropriate. Well, they clearly haven't, have they? Um, where, the where the suspect then reports allegations or counter allegations, i.e. reporting as a victim, then it is right that the police treat the two reports separately and allocate separate officers. I agree with that. This ensures impartiality, <laughs> didn't in this case, and also allows the officers to remain victim focused on the report in hand. I'm sure you will appreciate that this is a difficult position to manage. I, I, yes, I, I, I get that. However, I note that the report you made was given the crime reference, I don't think this is relevant, um, and a separate officer in case was allocated to deal with your report. Right, now, okay, so th this is very long and I need to wrap it up. So, okay. Um, the next few pages... I don't really want to look at because it makes me feel quite sick. It's it's all basically saying where all their qualifications, where they've done these, I don't know, five minutes or less of um, training in um, domestic abuse, vulnerable callers. Um, what else have we got here? It's just all, it's just all saying how brilliant they are and all oh, they they they, you know you're not what they're claiming them to be. They they take domestic abuse. It's called, okay, DA champions. They're called DA champion, champions. I don't really want to read all this. It's all about how brilliant they are and how qualified they are in um, to take on cases of domestic abuse. Maybe I, I was dealt with by um, the T-boy and the T-girl then. I don't know. Something must have happened. DV matters. It's deep, that's what I'm just reading this in DV Matters, which focuses on special. Okay, um, okay, we're still talking about the, the. Oh, this is interesting. I note that having read the IOPC findings, concerns were raised regarding the nature of the call held with you versus the evidence recorded on the police records. Firstly, I may comment on the nature of the call. Having listened to the call, my view. Whilst I fully acknowledge that I'm listening to this as an impartial party and not as an accused person, I consider that the call was well handled. Police staff can't mention her. Her manner was firm, but also very balanced. And I note, I note that at the start of the call, um, she, refer, she offered to listen to your side of the story, for which you appeared to be very appreciative. Yeah, I was, because I thought we were going to have some, something promising here. The, the call appeared to be very too well. <laughs> The call appeared to be very two-way and an open discussion between the two of you. That's a complete and utter lie. Um, it wasn't well handled. It wasn't two-way for reasons that I've just I've mentioned. Um, and uh, what else have we got? Oh, he's still going on about... Um, OK, yeah, he's talking about how brilliant they are and they, they have a heart of passion against domestic violence, which they clearly don't. Um, OK, I'm aware we've got to wrap it up as part of the complaint process. Blah, 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 blah. OK, as part of the complaint process, both officers have been recontacted and your feelings to satisfaction and complaint allegations have been shared with them. The second part of this complaint allegation reads... Um, the complainant states that the IOPC agreed that uh, the, the member of police staff, if I meet, should not have reacted the way she did concerning domestic abuse by her other worrying comments, but to be more mindful of her tone, as stated in the report. I cannot revisit this 
as it was already being addressed by the IOPC. I'll be sending a copy of the IOPC outcome letter to that particular person, um, as was the wish of the IOPC for her consideration regarding their comments. Although you remained unhappy with the comments made by the officer, policy and procedure had been followed. This was the second time you had been spoken spoken to about the, the matter regarding two separate reports. Okay, the offence, I believe, was made out, albeit there were evidential difficulties that prevented it being progressed. Okay, it's just going now through, um, sorry, this is very long, but it's uh, a procedure. They're just talking about procedure now. Obviously, I can't read all of this out because it's, it's like I said, it's 45 pages. Um, now, this is where it gets interesting. I note, the, I note the comments from the IOPC regarding the tone police staff, um, we'll call her K, adopted. But I am not in agreement with this. And for the reasons stated above, I conclude that the correct action has been taken and are determined that the level of service provided by the police was acceptable in relation to this complaint allegation. Your complaint has been closed as I consider it resolved by way of my explanations above. However, if you remain unhappy with this explanation, yes, <laughs> you have the right to apply for a review of the handling and outcome of your complaint. Please note that a review will not lead to an, a reinvestigation of original criminal investigation you have complained about. Instead, the review will only consider whether my com complaint handling and any outcome I I, um, I come to has been reasonable proportionate. OK, so OK, so that's basically the end of it. So it's now um, so he's saying. If you ain't happy with how I've handled this, you can now complain about me, him. Too right, too right. Um, it's interesting that the IOPC, again, they police the um, PSDI, get my dyslexia in the way, Police um, Professional Standards Department, Inspector. Um, yeah, it's interesting that the IOPC, who polices basically everyone in a nutshell, that they disagreed with um the way all of this was handled and again thank god hallelujah for them so this is really interesting because if the iopc um disagreed and thought this was disgusting police conduct um this psdi is disagreeing with them that's interesting. That just goes to prove that the police and the professional standards department, the investigator, that they have to all be in on it together, covering for each other. That that's just evidence that they just they're just trained and taught to just cover for the police, what, irrespective of what they do. Again, if the IOPC have agreed to it being a case of misconduct. The report I've read doesn't even make any sense, does it? I've broken it down. And I'm sorry that it's been a bit jumbled, but it's been quite hard to... It was, it was a long report, as, as you can tell, and I've, I've, I've cited notes as to where these things are just ludicrous. Um, my side of the story wasn't listened to. Um... They're, they're working with a biased attitude. They're not taking rationality into account, um, being completely dismissive of domestic abuse by by the um, the police staff, the person who phoned me, the lady who phoned me, and the police sergeant who was the guy who um, her supervisor who covered for her. Um, and um, they continue with the false accusations. Nothing's been answered. There's no responsibility taken. And so I intend to go to town on this because it's not okay. It's not okay. They need to see 
that the general part, as I've, I've repeated myself, the general public are not going to have any respect for the police when they do things like this. They need to be honest. We will turn to them more. We'll put our trust in them more. I think I've said on, on another broadcast that in the, t in the it's still there. I'm tempted to add to it, but pff, better not after all this. All these heroes, posters of heroes um, on the walls of, of um, derelict shops. Our firemen, our um, pharmacists, our doctors, our nurses, um, all these heroes. And whenever there's a picture of a police officer, um, one of them's actually got a, a snout drawn over the nose and, and smelly pigs written on it. And I, I looked at it today and I just stood laughing. <laughs> With my spray can. No, I did <laughs> No, but, well, I would have liked to have done. I would have, actually, if I saw the person in operation, I, I wouldn't have t uh, partaken, but I probably would have stood back clapping. Um, but anyway, I need to wrap it up here, but I just, I know I'm going over old ground, but this is a new report covering the same old stuff. But it's, it, again, how far are they going to go with the lie? Just, come clean just be honest i was honest in the phone call yes i did phone social services i expect honesty in return anyway i've gone on um i hope i haven't bored you rigid and uh thank you for tuning in and until next time lots of love and god bless